Wrong screen. There I am. Well, shalom to you. Uh, I'm going to do a really quick word study here. Um, this is on uh, the topic of Baal, or Baal, as it's pronounced in Hebrew. Um, Lord and Adonai, or Adoni. Uh, these words kind of, sort of, go hand in hand, but not really. <laughs> uh, I'll explain this. Um, now, there's um, there's some teachings going around uh, that we should not call uh, Yahweh or Yehovah. I'll, I'll just call him Yah uh, Yahweh from now on. Um, that we should not call him Lord, because uh, that is what Baal means, or Baal. Now, uh, let me explain the term Baal, or Baal. Baal is more the English version of it. Uh, Baal is more the Hebrew, so um, it's it's spelled B-A-A-L. I like to spell it B-A apostrophe A-L, uh, and pronounce it Baal or Baal, whatever. Um, Baal is kind of a version of Lord, um, and this is why people, you know, in First Kings... Um, if I can bring that up here. First Kings um, has the story, and I'm sure a lot of you are probably familiar with it, uh, the story of uh, when Elijah went up against the prophets of Baal, and, or Baal, and uh, all this kind of stuff, and they're like, you know, not to bow down to uh, this, um, you know, this uh, god named Baal. And everything else, and you know, it was like a big showdown, and you know, it was on the mountain, and all. You know, it was it was, it was a really big deal. Um, so people take that, and they're like, okay, but all it means a lord of some sort, everything else. And let me show you this particular verse, maybe. Um, maybe not that particular verse, <laughs> but First Kings. Um, you know, it's 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 in there. Um, you know, you can even look uh, around chapter eighteen, I think, and. Um, there is the story. Actually, it's mostly First Kings 18, um, but in Second Kings, um, he is also mentioned. But also, through there's actually different parts of uh, the Bible. Sorry, I thought I was ready for this, but I'll just go with it. <laughs> um, there's, uh, I think it's. Sorry, I'll just bring it up. Let's see what this does. Hey, there it is. Um, as mentioned, there, there's different places like Baal Zivan, and uh, there's, uh, let's see here, what book is that? Let's accept that one. Aha. Okay. Uh, in Joshua, book of Joshua, it mentions uh, Baal Gad, or God. Um, now I'm going to show this verse to you. This is another one of those things. All right, I'm actually going to show you something. Here we go. <laughs> now, uh, gosh, that scared me. Um, in Joshua 11:17, it says, "From Mount Halak, uh, that goes up to Seir, uh, even to Baal God, in the valley of Lebanon under Mount Hermon, and he took all their kings and struck them and killed them." Um, so right here. Let me see if I can highlight this. Yay. Baal God. Um, now, I am not actually... I'm actually pronouncing G-A-D correctly. God was a an Elohim of sorts. Um, a false God, of course. But a lot of people uh, look at G-A-D. Um, and, you know, I've, I've seen some studies that show that this is how we got our English pronunciation and translation of Elohim, or El, uh, the Germans, um, ger uh, well, German translators, whatever, uh, they took it on uh, and said that the way you would say Elohim in German would be God, um, and therefore we have G-O-D. Here, it's kind of like Baal God, it's like saying Lord God. So, um, there's a lot of teachings going around that I've seen that uh, teach not to call him Lord or God because they are both from, you know, some kind of pagan god worship and everything else like that. And I don't fully agree with that, really. Um, you know, of course, I, you know, I'm one, I am a messianic who believes in the Hebrew Roots movement. Um, now, I am an English-speaking American. Sorry. Um, and that's... 
I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, you, you really got to pray about it and everything else. Now, let me show you this. Let me see if I can pull up the right page. Hooray, Google. Um, I want to go here. All right, this is Wikipedia. Now, I want to show you something interesting. First of all, I want to show you this picture. Sorry for moving around so much. There it is. Uh, that is supposed to be a picture of an, uh, an idol. Um, this is basically Baal, what he was ex intended to look like. If you see here, um, it looks like a Phrygian cap, kind of like what Santa Claus wore, uh, or wears, or whatever. Um, also similar to Tammuz, the reincarnated sun god Mithra. Um, so that's an interesting tidbit there. Now let's go over to the meat of this. To read this to you. Uh, Baal, Biblical Hebrew, uh, usually spelled Baal in English, uh, is a Northwest Semitic title and honorific meaning master or lord. So it's, it's you know, it means master or lord. It's, it's a title, is generally what it is. Uh, but it goes on to say that it is used for various gods who were patrons of cities and the Levant and the Asia Minor, uh, cognate to the Okaidian Bedu. Is their their way of saying it? Um, a Baalist or a Baalite means of uh, means a worshipper of Baal. Baal can refer to any god, and even to human officials. It's very similar to Elohim. Elohim um, meaning mighty ruler or judge. Uh, also translated um, kind of skeptically as God, but. Um, the reason that Baal is a little bit more frowned upon is because of the fact that, um, uh, you know, First Kings and Second Kings, where uh, Elijah or Eliyahu goes up against the prophets of Baal and proves by using the uh, true name, uh, whether it be Yahweh or Yahweh, um, of the uh, Almighty Shaddai, he was, well, not he, but, you know, Yahweh defeated them and they were all killed. But, um, let's go on. And, um, in some texts it is used for Hadad, a god of the rain, thunder, fertility, and agriculture, and the lord of heaven. Uh, since only priests were allowed to utter his divine name, Hadad, Baal, was commonly used. Nevertheless, few, if any, biblical uses of Baal refer to Hadad, uh, the lord over the assembly of gods on the holy mount of heaven, but rather refer to any number of local spirit deities worshipped as cult images, each called uh, Baal and regarded in the Hebrew Bible uh, in that context as a false god. So there you have it, uh, Baal, a false god. That is why we don't really worship Baal uh, or Baal. Uh, now, Baal was a false god. The The question comes up, were, were they just putting Baal in the place there uh, in in First Kings so that they would not utter the name of the uh, the false god or the false, false Elohim, or was Baal the name? Now, interestingly, Baal is the beginning of the name given to Ahasatan, Satan, the adversary, um, in the name, and it's very familiar, uh, we are typically told it's Beelzebub, but often it is Baalzebub, which means Lord of the Flies, or Master of the Flies. Uh, that is an interesting tidbit. Now, what we're going to do is go over here. Now, the second word I want to point out to you is uh, Lord, as we know it as um, Adonai, or Adoni. Um, right here, booyah. Um, now here, this uh, if you look in Revelation, which I'll show you in just a minute, um, and I'm sorry if this video is skippy, i got a lot of windows open. <laughs> um, so here you see uh, the, the phrase, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Very uh, popular, very familiar if you've read or heard any sermons or whatever from the book of Revelation. Now, King of Kings in Hebrew is Melech Melachim. And Lord of Lords is Adon HaAdonim. Uh, that Im there, you see, Him, Nim, etc. Uh, just very similar to Elohim. Um, and uh, Avraham uh, is a uh, plural intensive. Um, it's Hebrew is the only language, uh, as far as I know, that has this. Um, and here it is. It, 
it's very interesting phrasing, and I, I absolutely love looking at the phrasing king of kings. He is the king of kings. Kings have him as his their king. Lords have him as their lord. He is the lord of lords. Uh, very cool. Um, but here, okay, so you have Adon HaAdonim. Now the word Adonai in Hebrew, uh, that is what we have translated. I'm doing a quick Google search. <laughs> uh, let's see here. This says Hebrew name of God, but it's not a name, it's a title. Um, a lot of Christian circles get that wrong. Let's see here. Um, all right. Adoni, or Adonai, uh, is the plural of Adon, meaning Lord, 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 Master, or Owner. The word Adon derives from the uh, Ugard, uh, sorry, Ugaritic word, meaning Lord or Father. In the Tanakh, or the Hebrew Scriptures, the word Adon can refer to men and angels, as well as the Lord uh, God, or Yahweh Elohim of Yisrael. Uh, like in Exodus 34 and 23. Uh, God is called the Lord of Lords in Deuteronomy, and Psalm 8.1 mentions God as Yahweh, our Lord, or Adonai. Or Adonai. The plural form, Adonai, Adonai, or whatever, uh, like the plural form uh, Elohim, is regularly used with singular verbs and modifiers, so it is best to construe the name as an emphatic plural or plural of majesty. Um, that that kind of goes back to what I was talking about the um, the idea of uh, a plural intensive. In the plural form, uh, using a singular possessive ending, my lords, uh, it always refers to God and occurs over three hundred times in the Tanakh in this form. Um, and I'm going to stop there. So there, you know, there there's what you're. That's what we see with Adon or Adoni. Um, now let's go back to the scripture. You know, I like using this program, but it's also weird because I can't edit anything. It's like what you see is what you get and everything else. Here's the revelation part. Um, so, now oh, I'm confused. <laughs> uh, where'd it go? Actually, you know what? I think it's down here. There it is. Hey. Um, okay, and he has uh, on a garment and on his thigh a name written and it's interesting use his uh, on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords remember that was um, um and adon ha adoni <sighs> you catch my breath here uh king of kings and lord of lords now the reason i bring up this this popular not popular uh this uh teaching uh, this issue, uh, the cross-reference of Baal, Lord, Adonai, Adonai, um, and I wanted to show you the scripture in the uh, in Revelation 19:16 that he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and in fact, throughout Scripture we have this term used. Uh, this this te this video is more or less um, focused on those people who teach not to call him Lord and so on, it's okay to because, and let me explain, he is Lord of Lords. The Bible says he is Lord of Lords. Now, just because it's in English doesn't mean anything, but going back to Hebrew, as we saw, it is Adon, uh, Adon Ha Adonim. Uh, it, is, it is fine because he is Lord of all. Um, he, and that is special. He is Adon Ha Adonim. He is Lord of Lords. He's not simply Lord. Now, no, he is not Baal. He's not Baal. Uh, he is not some various lord out there. He is the lord of lords. He is the king of kings. The Melech HaMelechim. That is a very powerful title that he has. And as uh, we saw just a moment ago, um, that that is his name. Uh, on his thigh, that is his name, um, and and what uh, and that of course in Revelation uh, was referring to Yeshua, but also like in books of uh, the book of Deuteronomy, um, you we see that um, uh, Yahweh is also called Lord of Lords, um, and that is a very interesting.
thing, and borderline Trinitarian, but um, the Trinity is one of those things that I'll get into. Actually, I'm planning on doing a new uh, a video teaching on the Trinity, and uh, it's going to be kind of long, <laughs> probably. But um, that's, uh, you know, that's what I'm talking about here. It's, it's the fact that um, certain titles, like there's, there's teachings, uh, you know, people just kind of write it off, and it's like, oh, you know, Lord is, you know, that's that's the title given to any British landowner, and blah blah blah, and, and and it's like, oh no, it's not just simply that. He is Lord. He is Adon Ha Adonim. He is. He just is. Um, so it's it's okay call him, to call him Lord. Um, you know, and and that's one of those d things about. Uh, and I'm wrapping this up. I'm coming to a close. That's one of those things about being uh, in the Hebrew roots movement. Is like you you want to you know you want to say it in Hebrew. You know, it's it's not only fun, but like whenever I had first started to, instead of praying to God, I started to pray to Yahweh. And even now, just saying that name, you feel the Ruach just come in. He, he, he makes himself present and known. Um, and it, it's, a, it's so beautiful, it's so powerful. And Whenever, like, uh, whenever I was reading um, Melech HaMelechim and Adon HaAdonim, it's, you know, I probably don't understand the Hebrew as strongly as an actual, you know, Israeli national who speaks Hebrew or someone who scholarly knows Paleo-Hebrew, but it's still, there's something more powerful to it, you know? Um, but I think it's perfectly fine to call him Lord Yahweh or Lord Elohim or you know Adonai uh, Elohim. Just it's something you need to study. And I, I was listening to a uh, teaching recently by Jim Staley of uh, Passion for Truth, um, and he uh, he made a statement and he said that um, the Bible was never meant to be read; it was meant to be studied. And I believe, you know, I agree, that is true. I don't think there's anything wrong with reading the Bible, but studying is where you will actually learn and you will internalize things. And this is one of those topics, too, and I hope this video inspires you to actually go look it up for yourself. Um, you know, I did a bunch of Google searches, and that, you know, that's fine. Um, but actually, like, you know, just go after it. Look at what the Hebrew is. Um, and But you also have to be careful. And, and um, I keep talking about this video, but I'm going to be doing a teaching that's called All That Is Jewish Is Not Gold. Um, uh, Orthodoxy Jews call uh, Yahweh, based off their um, their Pharisaic teachings that the name is ineffable, they call him Hashem, which means the name. Um, that does not mean that you are not allowed to call him uh, Lord, Elohim, Adoni, uh, Yahweh, etc. He, you know, he, he says to call him by his name. He says, this is my name. And if you call for salvation, call out to my name, Yahweh. Um, but anyways, um, I'm nearing 20 minutes. I'm going to cut it off here. Uh, I hope this was educational. I hope it helped some people kind of see, uh, different aspects of the term Lord. Um, its uses, and it's kind of interesting too, it's like that, uh, it's that, you know, you got Baal, you know, this, this kind of corrupt, evil form of Lord, but then you have Adoni, the more proper and um, more uh, accepted term or form, and um, again, you know, I want to, you know, I want to encourage you, inspire you to do your own study on this, um, you know, cross studying and researching on Adoni, uh, Baal, and look at, uh, take a look at the name uh, or the title associated with Hasatan, Baal Zabab, uh, the Lord of the Flies. Very interesting stuff, um, and, you know, Hebrew is a beautiful language. Uh, I am not fluent in it by no means, but it's still, every time I, I learn a new word or learn something new about the Aleph bit, it, it's just something comes to life more, and it, your, you know, just your universe expands, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really cool and awesome. But hallelujah and shalom to you, and I hope that... Um, with the holidays coming up, you keep a level head, because, um, yeah, those arguments about the uh, Christmas versus Hanukkah and etc. They're gonna, they're gonna be in a lot of families, <laughs> aren't they? Uh, but it's okay. Um, 
truth will prevail, and uh, you just stay strong, fight the good fight, hang in there, and uh, breathe. <laughs> Shalom to you. Thank you for watching, and uh, and uh, may Yah bless. Amen.